Hello and welcome to this... W Don't ask. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Antiquity has described the first Neanderthal skeleton discovered in a decade that still has their bones arranged in its original position, also known as having articulated remains. This skeleton joins the famous Shanindar collection of Neanderthal remains, the most famous being Shanindar IV, also known as the Flower Burial. Shanindar IV was discovered in 1960, and for many years it was believed that the pollen samples found nearby indicated that it was buried with flowers, which would have shed more light on the intelligence and empathetic capabilities of Neanderthals. In recent years, however, it has become more widely believed that the pollen was placed there by the Persian jerd, a small rodent which, well, sometimes buries flowers. The deposits of the flowers did indeed support this theory, so despite its fame, it seems that there were no flowers buried with Shanindar IV, although it's still believed that and other skeletons in the area were deliberately buried there. The reason I mention all of this is because more conventional news outlets that I've seen report on this so far have completely failed to mention this new evidence. This latest find is yet to be thoroughly analysed and part of the skeleton is missing, with one theory being that other remains found have been wrongly classified as a separate specimen. Starting off this week's paleontology news, a new relative of the wonderfully bizarre Triassic reptile Tanistrophius has just been described. Named Ribliania caligaraci, the species comes from the late Triassic Carnian aged rocks in Italy and has been recognised as a separate taxon based on many different characteristics in the bones, including uniquely shaped teeth, but it's still shared with the Tanistrophius, the incredibly elongated neck vertebrae. A nice new discovery, always good to have some more Tanistrophiids in the world. Also in the news, some exciting new discoveries to do with the giant side-necked turtle Stupendemis geographicus have been made. A paper was published recently which has described some new specimens of the reptile from new localities in the Miocene-aged rocks of Venezuela and Cambodia, including a particular fossil which is now known as the largest shell of any living or extinct turtle species, at 2.4 metres long. These new fossils have granted us a better understanding of the biology of these organisms, with it now being apparent that while one giant species of the turtle lived across the northern Neotropics at this time, there were two distinct morphotypes of this species. The males seem to have had shells with horns on them, while the females lacked horns. Additionally, it seems like the giant turtles would have been preyed on by the fearsome Cayman Purusaurus when they were around, as bite marks possibly from the enormous predators have also been found on the turtle fossils. And now over to Ben with some more news. Ben? I'm afraid Ben is unfortunately dead this week, which is why he isn't presenting the dinosaur news like he normally does and, and I did. Um, as for other notices, our Patreon has been updated and kind of just rejiggled a bit. So the $2 patrons will now get all the bonus vids that the $5 patrons and above got before. If you haven't already checked it out and see if it's something you kind of want to be a part of, I guess, um, do. And if you have, you bonuses. That's it for this week, I think.